should be live hello hi everyone let me just put everything in order before we start one two one two yeah should be good hello can I hear myself probably can let me see if I can uh, monitor the stream on uh, on Twitch before we start. So stream looks all right. I can't see myself live. Okay, let's try again. Okay, I think we're. I think we're live. Oh yeah. We are live. Okay, and I just I'm just gonna. pop out the chat and make it visible better let's see hello we're live okay and I think we are live that's great okay all right all right let me tell you about what the plan is for today i can i can see i think you can hear me so we should be all good okay let me tell you what the plan is today uh so today we're going to be instrumenting a crystal application with some custom prometheus metrics i've been talking about Christ, uh, crystal and prometheus uh and instrumentation for the last couple of sessions and we've actually covered different aspects of of instrumentations and we talked about simply uh, starting prometheus and and uh, looking at uh, custom metrics there so today i actually wanted to take things a little bit further from last time so last time we focused on a on the design of a crystal application that was a BitTorrent client that allows you to specify a BitTorrent file that you want to download and then we'll go and spawn a number of fibers and download data from a number of peers uh, until completion of the of the uh, file you're looking for and i thought it would be an actual concrete application of a custom metrics in custom metric in in this uh, particular context could be about measuring the amount of data we are downloading from each peer and i thought that's a good opportunity to actually uh, use prometheus counters to see um yeah to, to to see how we can leverage the power of prometheus on a on this sort of data uh, and so the thing i've done offline is i've uh, downloaded i've updated my my shards file to include the Prometheus dependency. Prometheus is this library we've talked about before. It's a Prometheus client for, for Crystal. It's fairly straightforward. Um, you'll see it as, as we use it. You can import it as per usual by adding the dependency to your shards YAML file, and then you can run shards install to uh, make sure that's, um, that's available to you uh, around the, uh, the application. And I've prepared this uh, small um, uh, list of items that we will go through uh, in this session, so that I also so also that, so that I don't forget. Uh, and um, and so what we'll do is first of all we need to pick something that we want to measure. Uh, I decided to keep track of how much data we've downloaded um, by has been downloaded by each peer then we'll just update our code so that we make sure that we are reporting actually on that new custom metric 
and we will then switch to the Prometheus uh, web UI to verify that the data uh, that we are um, the, the metrics that we are recording are actually getting used by by Prometheus and we'll just do some plotting of uh, rates and, and some of rates of, of kilobytes we've uh, downloaded so in order to start we need to okay first pick something to measure we've done that and then if you look at the architecture of this application we have here uh, probably we might have it pip torrent client design might be something we have uh, or maybe not if I go to drawings torrent app there you go so this was the design of our let me change the background so that it looks a bit nicer there you go so this is the design of our app we basically had a uh, list of uh, pieces that uh, so each BitTorrent comes with a list of pieces for the peer to download we put all these uh, bits of work to be done into a work queue and then we have a number of peers that are spawned uh, as fibers uh, that will uh, take care of uh, each bit of the of the work and then they will publish the results through another queue and a collector will just put everything together and store the full file into our um, into our file system and that's that's really all there is to it so uh, in terms of I don't know if, if I've showed you this before but if I try and run the application here and I try to uh, replay um, a previous run of the um, of the download you can see that we have a fairly straightforward UI where we're downloading uh, pieces you can see the the peers here and the way this uh, UI is populated is by uh, basically persisting all the events that took place during during the actual download well and the persistence is something on the side this just it just allows us to replay the events but in general the idea is that the uh, core logic of the application will produce a bunch of events and these events will be interpreted by a reporter and the reporter will have a few functions one of them is to actually um, show the user what's going on in the app I can control C here um, the idea here um, is that we want to um, update some of the events that are published to the reporters to include information about how many down, uh, uh, how many kilobytes we've downloaded from a particular peer and if we look at all the events that we've published to uh, to the reporter uh, there is one uh, that is used to um, give us general information about the BitTorrent we're downloading uh, and the file we're downloading and number of pieces and, and things like that how many we've completed there's another event that um, tells us that we have uh, connected to a particular peer and we've started downloading downloading a, a piece from it and then we have one that says that we have completed the, down the download of that particular file now if you if we want to kind of keep our um, event design more or less as is and try to enrich events that we already have it sounds like it feels like introducing an extra field in this completed event might be a good strategy to keep track of how many kilobytes we've downloaded so that's exactly what I'll be doing so we'll add a size kilobyte uh, which is just a float 64 um, and this is going to be uh, the amount of kilobytes we've downloaded from um, from a particular peer on on completion of a piece and again a torrent is made of many many pieces so a piece might be uh, 200 300 kilobyte uh, big or yeah or, or yeah actually depending on the size of your of your torrent file um, it could even be a couple of megabytes so now that we have updated the uh, the initialization method for for a completed we want to just look around our application and make sure that when we instance uh, when we when we build an instance of completed we also pass in the number of kilobytes we've downloaded this should be straightforward enough uh, also let me just make the uh, code a bit bigger just in case uh, just to make your eyesight a bit more comfortable uh, and uh, if we wanted to also add the amount of kilobytes we've downloaded and we look up here you can see that um, when we start a download worker we build a connection with the peer 
we report on the fact that we have connected to a peer and then we read work from the uh, work queue which is this one and if the uh, piece is available at the at the given peer then we will mark the we will let the reporter know that we have started and then we will um, download the file uh, download the piece here so client download piece and we will put the file into a buffer so the the, the piece into a buffer the buffer is just um, uh, a bunch of bytes so if we run um, bytes dot size uh, what we'll get is the number of bytes that uh, are in this piece so by just dividing by 1000 we'll get the kilobytes what's the reasoning behind making kilobytes a float instead of an integer is a great question uh, bang monkey so if i go back here uh the thinking here for so it if the question is around why float 64 in particular rather than say another another kind of float then the answer is that the um, default floating point type for crystal is float 64 but to come more um, to come a bit closer to your question why float rather than integer um, it's it's a fair question i think the fact is we could keep track of uh, bytes that would maybe be a slightly a slightly cleaner approach at the end of the day it doesn't matter we definitely want to then display uh something a bit like a, a smaller number of digits to the user so we're likely going to be reporting on kilobytes anyway so i'm just doing myself a favor and um and storing that as a bunch of kilobytes uh, for for a start i think a viable option would be here to just say uh, this is the size size in uh, the, the say the byte size and say this is an int 32 and then we do the processing at presentation time which which is actually a very valuable but uh, very valid um, option here um, and be why we're taking float 62 64 here for kilobytes well because as we're getting out the size of the size in bytes and I'm dividing by a thousand I don't want to do too much processing here and I don't want to lose uh, too much information so that we can spot the fact that we are maybe downloading very little amounts of data from the peer and so I'm keeping some decimal uh, decimal digits in as well but it's totally arbitrary I'd be totally um, okay with with representing this as an integer maybe just the number of bytes so that we don't have to go through this uh, divided by a thousand our chunk size is less than 1024 uh, even valid that's an excellent question um i don't see why not in the sense that um in and and there might be something i don't know about the BitTorrent protocol but uh i don't i don't think there's any there's any sort of constraint on uh the size of each of each pieces there might be some um uh practices where you know it's a good idea to have multiples of well power of two number of bytes or uh something like that but i'm, I'm not aware of that uh, but it's a it's a very valid point if the protocol indeed says that uh, pieces are usually um multiple of 1024 bytes then uh yeah we might as well um go for that and and use that as a uh, as an assumption does that make sense i hope it does um so now that we are also uh, publishing information about how much data we have downloaded if we go back here uh we need to make sure that we are actually processing this uh this data somewhere right and i'll, I'll take the same approach as before if i look for a uh, case completed which should be somewhere maybe event uh, sorry so it's going to be case yeah uh, when completed sorry then we can see where we are actually processing the completed events oh i'll go try to work that out oh yeah thanks thanks bang monkey let, let me know because I'm, I'm interested too because the BitTorrent client is a, a protocol that i've only kind of been exposed to by reverse engineering existing BitTorrent clients so i'm very you know uh, i'm very ignorant on the actual technical uh, details so any information would be much appreciated thanks um I'm thinking okay so we have this reporter um, class here where um, from any part of the application when, when someone uh, 
creates a report that they can send events through and this will be uh, processed by uh, by our, by our processor here and so far what we've done is we've been updated the so-called uh, so-called torrent status um, of, of the application so that a UI can actually display that and we've actually implemented three different types of UI we have a very minimal UI where we just print things on the terminal just a one-liner we have a more involved a UI where we actually use end cursors to display a nice table and not scroll over the terminal all the time. And then we have a nice web UI, very minimal, but again, a table representing uh, our peers and the number of pieces we, are com we have completed and the state of each, uh, of each peer. Uh, but here we want to do something different. We're not interested in updating the UI itself. We actually want to record some uh, metric in uh, Prometheus. So we have to go and look at how we can do that with Prometheus, which is, as I was saying, the um, Prometheus, a Prometheus client for um, for Crystal. So the first thing I'll do is I'll require Prometheus inside the reporter, and then as we initialize um, the reporter, I want to make sure I define a counter of, of some sort. And there's a suggestion here. So ideally, I could do something like this. I could do uh, Prometheus. I hope you can see the the screen here. I can do. Prometheus counter and I say uh, we want to record how many kilobytes we're downloading per peer so peer is going to be the tag we attach the bit of metadata we attach to the to the metric and then ideally we could do dot new and then pass in the name of the metrics which is downloaded for example and then a description a string description of the metrics and we can say kilobyte downloaded uh, and just as easy as that um, so we, we could just do this and say this is our downloaded downloaded uh, kb equals um, but the compiler is going to complain about the type uh, the about inferring the type of this um, of this object so there's a suggestion in the uh, in the readme here that says that you can actually create an alias of of the of a counter type or whatever other type if the if the compiler uh, complains, uh, and so and I can show you that if I uh, control B, so if if I try to run this, I'm gonna get a complaint about the type of saying that our instance variable uh, type is not um, uh, not clear. The the compiler cannot infer that. So we we'll just use this Prometheus a uh, alias. Um, uh, macro that will just make our code slightly more readable. So if I go back here, I can say, and actually have to define this. I can define this inside the reporter, and say that this is the uh, kilobyte counter, kb counter, and say that this object is of type kb counter, and mind that the tag is actually peer here, just like this. So now we have initialized the counter inside our reporter object and we've um, the metric that is going to pop up in uh, Prometheus is going to be called downloaded. If I try to run this, I shouldn't get any uh, any error here. Oh yeah, I shouldn't have called this bytes.size but buffer.size because buffer is the name of the uh, slice uh, that we were talking about. And if I try and compile again, then we should be good. And again, we haven't done much here, right? We've just initialized a counter. So nothing nothing should have changed. And that's exactly the case. If we scroll down, we can also see that here we are calling Prometheus default registry run server. What this does is it starts a local server uh, and at port 5000 and exposes the metrics at a slash uh, metrics uh, endpoint, which is fair and is exactly what we want. Uh, I can show you this um, uh, interesting uh, fact here. If I just in, uh, insert this line in our in our reporter, we're going to see uh, something a bit weird. So if I run this, I would expect to see the uh, UI being populated with a table and then uh, look at the files we are downloading. But as you can see, things are getting stuck. The reason for this is that uh, default registry run server is actually a uh, blocking operation. So what happens here is that our application goes through initialization, then it spawns um, a couple of fibers, and then it blocks on the uh, on the server launch. 
because the server is listening and waiting for connections. So what we actually want to do is we want to spawn a new fiber so that um, the execution is not blocked at this point. And if we run this again, we can see the first uh, tiny demo of our uh, of our work. Again, we will not see any metric um, uh, going up our counter. We're not updating our counter yet, but we are on the right path. So if I go to localhost uh, 5000 slash metrics, you can see that we have a bunch of predefined metrics for our process. And also uh, we have the uh, help message and the type of our downloaded um, kilobyte, uh, kilobyte downloaded counter. Um, and again, we are not updating this, so the metric is completely empty at the moment. We're going to keep this page open and I'm going to control C here so that we can uh, try this again uh, when we start updating the counter. Now, how do we go about updating the counter? And also, let me go back to our um, to our um, plan for a moment. So we wanted to uh, update the reporting uh, completed event to include piece size, which we've done. We have created uh, the counter, and now we want to update it. So when do we update the downloaded KB counter? We can do that when we um, receive a completed message. So we are, mind that we are updating the number of uh, downloaded uh, pieces. We're updating some data around the peers, and we also want to now not only increase the number of uh, pieces we have downloaded in this iteration, but also increase the count of uh, kilobytes by the event dot uh, size kb which as we said is the uh, amount of kilobytes we've downloaded from a particular peer um, for for this uh, um, for this piece of, of data and mind that because we have indexed the downloaded kb counter on a peer we actually need to pass the peer information here so we have to say and give it a, 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 a a string tag specifying which peer we're talking about, uh, which counter we want to uh, update, which is very convenient. You'll see later when we plot some charts, that's going to come in very handy. So ideally, we want to do something like event dot, uh, dot peer here. Unfortunately, uh, event dot peer at the moment is a custom type. So if I go look and uh, look at peer, peer is a custom struct, and by default, if we uh, call to string on this uh, on this type we're gonna um, get a string representation that is not necessarily the one we expect so we're gonna get something a bit mm, a bit a bit of a crowded string representation so I'm gonna define the to string method here and in in uh, crystal in order to define the uh, to string method it's always a good idea to define to string on some IO so that the transformation can always be uh, performed in an efficient in efficient way. Uh, in an efficient way. So I'm going to be passing in the address and then a uh, colon and then I'm going to be calling uh, port is actually a an integer so we can call to string on the integer and pass the IO here as well. And this is what will give us a very nice string representation of our uh, peer. Now that we've done this, if we call event.peer to string, uh, there's no need to um, pass the IO. That's going to be inferred because um, uh, Crystal knows that in absence of the IO, it can just rely on um, the standard output. Uh, sorry, on on a, a an in-memory representation of the string, and then we just increment the counter by this uh, amount. So if we look at this, so we've created and updated the counter, we've made the peer printable, which is good, and we have already started running the uh, Prometheus server. So let first thing, let me try and run this and see if there's any compilation error. Uh, downloaded is an instance variable, so I need to prepend it with an at. And if I try this again, uh, we want to also make sure that, uh, let me let me check what we called uh, this, size dot, size, sorry, what is this? Uh, undefined method size key B for completed. Did I add this to the wrong thing? Oh yeah, I just need to add size KB as a getter to the uh, to the event. If I run this again, then things should be all right. Okay, now we are downloading the file and at completion, we're also recording how many kilobytes we've downloaded. But as we said, we're not updating the UI 
to show that. So we now need to go and uh, see if the metric is being populated as expected. So first thing I can do is I can refresh this page and I can see that now we have a downloaded counter indexed on the peer, which is nicely formatted here as a string. And we can see the number of kilobytes we've downloaded. Not bad, right? And this, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually plot this data into Prometheus. So first thing first, let me just uh, open another terminal and check that I am actually running uh, Prometheus. We are not. So I'm going to be doing this. Uh, I can do this here, but I can do docker run. Uh, and then this is a command that we've explored already um, uh, last last week. And you can go on my Twitter account to see a uh, breakdown of what each one of these options actually does. But as a, uh, you know, in short, we're running Prometheus with a custom configuration that makes it ping this particular endpoint, localhost 5000 slash metrics every 10 seconds. So now that we're running this, we can run Docker PS and we can see that there's a Promethe Prometheus container running. I can actually exit this terminal and that's not going to change the fact that Prometheus is running. And to prove that, I can go to port, I think it's port 1990. And if I go here, this is our Prometheus UI, which some of you might be familiar with. Uh, and I can actually go through the experimental uh, React UI, which is sli slightly smoother. And if I go to targets, you can see that we have a couple of targets, which are the um, endpoints that uh, Prometheus is querying periodically. One is the uh, Prometheus um, uh, Prometheus endpoint itself, which actually keeps track of um, how Prometheus is doing in terms of metrics, which is very convenient. Prometheus sort of monitors itself. And the other one is our localhost 5000 slash uh, metrics endpoint. And we can see that if I refresh this, the last scrape happened one and a half second ago, more or less, and it lasted um, 900 milliseconds, which is all right. So how do we look at the actual uh, counter now? So we can go to graph and look for our metric. If you remember, our metric is called downloaded. We gave it this name, right? And if I execute here, we can see a very nice uh, table where we have the um, downloaded uh, counter and a bunch of uh, tags on it. And then the peer tag is what we actually cared about, which tells us how many kilobytes we've downloaded per peer, which is very convenient. The other bit uh, that is actually great is that we can switch to the graph tab and actually execute uh, this um, downloaded uh, query. And you can see if I maybe make the time resolution a bit, uh, so the, the time interval a bit smaller and look at the last five minutes, you can see that we are downloading data from our peers and the, the counter is always going up, which is uh, predictable. Counters in Prometheus can only go up. And that's what the interface actually give us in the uh, Prometheus um, API. And if I execute this again, every 10 seconds, we're going to see a bump here, right? So we're going up and up and up. And this is the number of kilobytes we've, we're downloading. This is nice, but there's probably some uh, better way of uh, looking at this data. For example, we could look at the rate of uh, kilobytes being downloaded, which actually tells us how many uh, kilobytes we're, uh, we're downloading per second, right? So if I do, and I can do this by saying, look at, um, like I say, a 40 second window and give me a moving, uh, a moving rate of, um, of um, downloaded kilobytes over time uh, for a, um, a, a, a window, a time window of window of 40 seconds. What this means is that we're looking at, uh, in a particular 40 second interval, we're looking at how many kilobytes we've downloaded so far in the counter. Say we are here, for example, and then we're looking at how many kilobytes we have 40 seconds later, which is up here. We're taking the difference between uh, the, the two points on the y-axis uh, and we're looking at the uh, time difference and we're doing uh, delta y uh, over, over delta x. And we get, so we get the rate of uh, downloaded kilobytes per second which is really convenient. And if I try and execute this, you can see that realistically, you can see download speeds that, that range from say, well, zero kilobytes, of course, but you know, uh, from around 10 kilobytes per second to around 80 kilobytes per second, which is 
reasonable. Another thing that is very nice about the uh, uh, visualization here is that we can define a time resolution. For example, it doesn't make sense to see one point um, more more often uh, points more often than every ten seconds, and we know that Prometheus might sometimes miss a point. So we can say, give me the um, smooth out the graph, giving me the number, uh, giving the the rate every thirty seconds, which make uh, things a bit more pointy, uh, but also um, a bit more readable for us, right? So the, so we know that again the range goes from zero kilobytes per second to around eighty. Another nice thing, we can actually show the stacked graph of uh, kilobytes downloaded per second. And if I do so, we can see that the peak speed of download for our, um, in, in this particular context, was around uh, 400 kilobytes per second, which is uh, fairly impressive, right? And if I go back, another thing I wanted to show you, so if I go back to uh, unstacked data, I can also show you that we, another way of accessing this it would be to take the sum. Oh, sorry, to take the sum of all the rates, which actually shows the uh, kilobyte, kilobyte per second downloaded over time uh, globally uh, across the app, which I would say is um, also pretty pretty cool. I would say. So, this is really it. Um, that's what I was thinking about covering. Uh, so I would now like to open up for questions if you have any. So we've seen, uh, just to recap a bit, we've looked at a BitTorrent client application written in Crystal. Crystal, we decided to keep track of how many kilobytes we've downloaded over time. And we've introduced, introduced an extra bit of data into an event that we were already reported, reporting on, which, which gets emitted every time we complete the download of a piece of a, of a, bit tor of a, of a torrent. And we've uh, made it so in our application that we also process this bit of information and, up, and update a, a Prometheus counter with, with information. And this seems to be working because we can actually look at the data both in an aggregated fashion and also in a per peer uh, fashion. If I do this, we can see how much we're downloading per peer, which is very convenient. And we've seen how the Prometheus UI makes it really easy for us to look at uh, to very very uh, quickly um, draw some charts on uh, uh, showing us what's going on in our application. So that's really all I wanted to show here. Uh, just a note on the on what we're doing here when we when we take the rate of a counter. Oh yeah, thanks. Mm, I was looking at. Oh yeah, so Bang Monkey was reporting on the. BitTorrent standard, I guess, a spec on the BitTorrent specification. So there's no piece length restriction in V2. You sp it's specified that you want power of two powers of two of at least 16 kilobytes. That's that's really 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 handy. Thanks, Bank Monkey. Um, yeah, I still think I still feel like it's probably a good idea to just go for int32 and. Um, uh, yeah, just go for int32 and then do all the transformation on the, you know, you know, in the presentation uh, layer of your application. Uh, so I'm, I'm totally with you on that. As you can see now, the download has completed, so the uh, the rate over time will will go to zero, uh, whereas the count will just stay as I as as it was. If I go back here, downloaded will always go up, right? Because these are these are counters. And again, looking at the at the rate, we can see how uh, this should go down over time. Am I already on the end time? Yes. Okay. Thanks for checking, Bang Monkey. Um, I wanted to just touch on why we're putting forty seconds here. So I've mentioned the fact that we are running one scrape every 10 seconds that's the interval we specify in the configuration where we say um and i can i can actually show you here so if i do vim oh sorry uh if i do cd and then this is the config that we actually pass to the uh, to prometheus and if you look at this you can see that for the job name crystal app we're giving it a scrape interval of 10 seconds so that's what 
uh, Crystal is going, uh, the, the Prometheus client is using uh, to decide how often it's going to scrape this particular URL. So if I go back to the graph and again uh, look at the rate of downloaded over 40 seconds and do this look at the graph we can run this again and look at the last say five minutes and smooth this out on 20 seconds for example no s then we can see we're back to this uh, looking at the rate uh, i wanted to cover why we're doing 40 seconds here so the idea is we are scraping once every 10 seconds but you know that something might go wrong at times so there might be um, um, uh, times where prometheus cannot reach the host or maybe prometheus is busy doing something else and doesn't manage to uh, run the um, hit the endpoint in time for as, as you might expect right and so that's why it's a good habit to take a time interval which is at least three or four times the um, scrape interval that that you define in the configuration so if you know that you're scraping every 10 seconds you can be fairly sure that you will find at least two data points in a 40 second range why am i talking about two data points rather than one well because we are talking about the rate um, of uh, of the downloaded kilobytes so we, we need at least two data points so that we can take the difference uh, the difference on the y-axis and the difference on the x-axis uh, and if we don't have at least two points we can't we can't do that and uh, the um, visualization might might break uh, or we will just get an error on um, on the on the querying side of things so you want to ensure at least three four times uh, that, that this interval here which basically says give me the moving rate on a 40 seconds window window for the downloaded kilobytes um, you want that to be at least three or four times the um, scrape interval and this makes sense for us right and the other aspect is that we're going from a count to a rate uh, and again in this case I'll always check that it makes sense to talk about a rate in this case it does because we are talking about kilobyte per second so it's it's a metric that we're we're familiar with we can we're also used to seeing that every time we look at a, an actual BitTorrent client UI we want to know how many kilobytes per second we're downloading um, but do verify that taking the rate actually makes sense oh and I've probably shown you this already we can also sum this and this will sum over all the tags uh, which uh, which also gives us a nice slightly smoother smoother line I think we're not downloading anything at the moment so you see uh, things are a bit sad now okay give you a couple of minutes for questions while I think uh, what else I can cover otherwise I will just wrap up the stream yeah I've been thinking for a while about what would be good to measure what else would be good to measure and also where it would be good to measure it so at the moment we are recording the completion of a piece at the level of the peer the torrent client i believe so here we are or not or the sorry the torrent file so this is where we actually start a worker and this is where we actually record the metric and I was wondering if it's a good idea to get maybe more like a finer grain information uh, from within the peer client itself. So as you can see here, we start the peer client, but then we, we're not passing the reporter to the peer client. So if we wanted to get a bit more granular data about how much, how much we're downloading, maybe even before the completion of a piece, we would have to go within like add, pass the reporter to the torrent client itself if we go here you can see that when we are downloading we are issuing a few requests to download um, a piece and then collecting them in this loop here where we decode a message from the client and then uh, depending on the type of message we act differently right and ideally we would want to we could at least um, communicate like talk about kilobytes received even when we receive messages outside the pieces even though there's going to be uh, you know 
piece related communication is going to be dominating the, the traffic anyway. So it might be a bit of an overkill. There's also another chunk, another bit of code where we, where we could think about instrumenting uh, the code to gather more metrics around uh, speed of download and upload. And that is in the definition of our messages themselves. So I've defined the messages as a, an abstract uh, uh, struct. And, and then we, I've instantiated this abstract struct into the different types of messages that you can have um, in, BitTorrent, in a BitTorrent communication. And if you look at this, you can see that we have very, very fine-grained uh, control over how much, uh, how many kilobytes have, are been, and bytes are being transferred between the two peers. So one could send events around uh, every bit of communication, really and say when we're reading a U, U int or uh, a, a number of, of, um, of, of we're reading fully, which is when we read a piece, we could take that opportunity to, yeah, to, to track the kilobytes we're downloading and uploading. It would also be interesting to investigate what it would take to add a rate limiter to this, um, to this system, to this, um, uh, encoding and decoding mechanism so that we can set a maximum download speed or upload speed for our client and and then keep track of that in something like Prometheus for example but in, again that's that's for another for another session okay this is really all I've got for today I hope you had some fun bank monkey thanks for uh, being such an active uh, viewer really really enjoy the the conversation and and I think I've learned something today, which is great. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you again next week. Please don't hesitate to, to reach out if you have some questions on what we've covered or if you'd like to see uh, something a bit more in depth and we'll pick it up next week. Cheers. Bye bye.